my name is Prashant Kumar and I welcome you all for learning social institution under the topic ethics, theories and applications. As we all are aware of the fact that we are social beings and when we are in a society, it is really important for all of us to know why do we really need to understand what social institutions are. In this particular video, we are going to learn about social institutions a certain facts. Mainly, why do we really need social institutions? What are the importance of social institutions? What are they? And at the end of the, this video, we are going to learn some accounts on social institutions. So if we start by uh, stating Antonio Gramsci, which he stated in a letter from prison to his son, Leo, he says, contemplating all the men of the world, who come together in society to work, struggle and better themselves cannot but please you more than any other being. So if we try to understand social institutions in a very simple language, we really need to ask and also think about all the men and because this has been written a lot earlier, now we really need to correct the language, all persons. So when all the persons come together in order to work for a collective good, we can say that we are forming a social institutions. So let's have a uh, very general idea about social institutions. So earlier, if we go to Greek philosophers, Aristotle once said that we are social and political creatures. What does he mean by this particular statement? He says that, and for example, we, if we try to see uh, ourselves only, when we are born, there is a one single relationship we can all think of, a relationship, uh, of a relationship with mother and relationship with father. So the moment we are born, we always find that there is a relationship. And now we need to understand the other relationship. There are neighbors, then we can think of there is a state, then there is a relationship with the government, there is a relationship with the education system. So the moment we are here, the moment we are in the world, we can find out many relations. And that's what he means that humans are not in isolation. We are always in a very complex nexus of social and political understanding and situations. And one of the main character of human being is social, relational and cultural. Because the moment we are here, the nexus of social, the nexus, because it's also relational to the other aspects, political, economical, and also because we are a part of a culture. There is always, there have always been a culture understanding and there will always be a culture understanding. We always come in between and that's why there is a close nexus of social relation and culture. And at all levels, whether it's cosmic, social, religious, economical, we are always related to things, persons and events outside us and as we journey along the pathway of life. So we always need to understand time whenever we are thinking of ourselves. So we all have a past, we all have a present and we will always have a future. And in this sense, we can always think of the things that we are related to. So right now, if I am talking to you through uh, online mode, there is a computer, there is a camera, so I am always associated with all these things. Then there are persons, so we can always think of a person who is recording all these things. At this particular moment, whatever I am doing, I am always related to certain people, certain things, and certain events. But at this moment, we must not think that if we are not in isolation, individuality, autonomy are something which is very opposite to sociality. No, it's not. Sociality and individuality are not opposite poles. They are necessarily related to each other. To be social, one has to be individual and vice versa. In this sense, not only we try to save the individuality in, in the whole scenario, but also we try to see the relationship of an individual in the collective sense, in the social level. So, an individual can stand face to face with one another and thus by standing they constitute a community or society. Society becomes a crowd when a lot of people, many people come together and form a group. So, while maintaining the individuality, while maintaining the fundamental rights, while maintaining the personal desires, one can still think of society. Where we are going to 
strive for a collective aim or collective good. So why we really need to read about it, why we really need to understand the importance of uh, social institutions. Definitely if we really want to understand the existence uh, in a society, we need to understand. Unless we don't understand the institution, we don't understand the norms, the values, the principles, we can never have a meaningful existence. So that's the first point we really need to understand. The second point is social institutions play an important role in forming the society. They have a variety of significant customs and habits accumulated over a period of time. So each society, each social institution we are currently in, whether we talk about education system, economical system, a cultural system, there is a history. And in those history we have accumulated many customs, many norms, many values. So unless until we don't understand, we may not be able to carry out the principle of those uh, institutions. The third point is, the social institution provides certain enduring and accepted forms of procedure governing the relation between individuals and group. If one is in the society, we really need to understand the relationship between groups. So if we are not going to um, adhere with the rules of a particular institution, we might be thrown out. So how we can not only endure the individuality in a system, but also the society itself, we really need to understand the forms and the procedures of governing the relations. The fourth point is, the social institution which give the habitual way of living together, which has been sanctioned, systematized and established by the authorities. We can think of authorities some other time, but obviously who are they who will define the habits, who will define the rules, laws, norms. But that's a different thing. But right now we really need to understand with the historical process of any social institutes, we definitely come out with the habits. We definitely come out with a systematized rule. We also come out with the norms, which not only tells us what to do, but also tells us what not to do. So in any social institution, where not only we learn what and the ways through which we are going to live, but also it restricts certain actions. The fifth point, we must note that these institutions are the wheels on which human society marches on. So unless until we don't have any principle, we don't have any set parameter, we may not function well in any human society. The last is, people create social institution to meet their basic needs of survival. Hence, the study of social institutions is important. So unless until we cannot think of a secure survival, we cannot think of a secure existence, can we really imagine any institution, any social institution where we can fulfill our desires and dreams? For example, imagine a place where a, a particular riots is happening. We just had witnessed riots in Delhi, uh, North Delhi. Just imagine the life there. Can we really think of a peaceful life there? No. So in order to avoid the chaos, we really need a systematic way of living together, systematic way of living peacefully. And we can only do that if we have a set of principles, if we, set our, we, we have a set of norms, laws, on the basis of which we can decide which action is right and which action is not right. So that's why on the basis of these reasons, we really need to understand why, why social institutions are really important. So let's understand a definition. Jonathan H. Turner, a professor of sociology at University of California, points out very clearly. He says that a social institution is a complex of positions, roles, norms and values lodged in a particular types of social structures and organizing relatively stable patterns of human activity with respect to fundamental problems in producing life sustaining resources in reproducing individuals and in sustaining viable societal structure within a given environment. So if we just understand this thing, there are three important things. The structure, the sustaining societal reproducing individuals and also how we are going to live despite that there is a fundamental problem in society, the contradictions of general will that we can think of, that we can talk about. So for example, if we all are living in a society, we may have a different desires, we may have a different will, 
which might be contradictory. So how we are going to turn all the contradiction, all the in a meaningful existence, meaningful coexistence. So the term social institution refers to complex social form that reproduce themselves such as political institutions like government, state and if we talk about a kinship uh, social institution, we can think of family, human languages, universities, hospitals, economic institution like business corporations and legal system. So these can be the examples of uh, social institutions. So how many types we can think of these social institutions? So there are five major institutions. The first one is economic institution which serve to produce and distribute goods and services. We all know that what are economic institutions. I mean for example we can think of RBI, we can think of banks, we can also think of companies who can produce a lot of goods. Then political institution. We all know that each and everything that we can think of in, a, in, a, in a, our society, it is all driven by politics. Each policy is made by the political people. So that's why this particular institution becomes important. A stratification institution, it determines the distribution of positions and resources. Then we can think of kinship institution that deals with marriage, the family and the socialization of the young. The last one is a cultural institution which are concerned with religious, scientific and artistic activities. So now we can think of accounts of social institution. Any account of social institution must begin by informally marking of social institution from other social forms. There are a variety of theoretical accounts of institution including sociological as well as philosophical one. So we can always think uh, about social institution from two perspectives, sociological and philosophical and we are going to think through philosophical ones. To start with, social institution need to be distinguished from less complex social forms such as conventions, social norms, rules and rituals and also needs to distinguish from more complex and more complete social studies such as society or culture of which any given institute is typically a constitutive element. Social institutions are often organizations as well. We can think about how social institution not only is an organization but also it forms many organizations. So within social institution we can think of family, we can think of economical, we can think of political organization. So many institutions are systems of organizations as well. For example, capitalism is a particular kind of economic institution. And in modern times, capitalism consists in large part in a specific organizational form, including multinational corporation, organized into a system. Some institutions are meta institution. Meta institution means that these are the institutions that can also organize other institutions. For example, governments. Governments are meta institutions. Governments regulate and coordinate uh, economic system, educational institution, police, military organization and many more. You can think of any possible, uh, uh, possible institution. Just look around. You will find that government is managing most of the institution that you are part of. Some institutions are not organization or system of organization and do not require organization. For example, we can think of language. You can think of any language. Think of Hindi, think of English, think of Tamil. So even if there is an institution that might not organize it because language is quite flexible, language is quite progressing and the moment we can think of such organization, it is really difficult to organize to make a bar on that and that's why we cannot say that these institutions are organization. It always develops. So how is social institution distinct from society? So if we talk about a society, we can think it is more complete, more complete than any institution. Since a society, at least as we have understood traditionally, is more or less self-sufficient in terms of human resources whereas an institution is not. Thus, arguably for an entity to be a society, it must sexually reproduce its membership. It must have its own structure, territory, culture, language and educational system. And it must provide for itself economically and at least in principle, politically independence. So, if we are going to talk about uh, the characteristics of social institution, we can think of four important characteristics. 
the first one is a function the second is structure culture and sanction so if we talk about function an organization or system of organization consists of an embodied structure of differentiated roles these roles are defined in terms of tasks and rules regulating the performance of those further these roles are often related to one another hierarchically and hence involve different level of status and degrees of authority finally on teleological and functional accounts these roles are related to one another in part in virtue of their contribution to the ends or function of the institution and the realization of these ends or function normally involve in interaction between the institutional actors in question and external non institutional actor so if we have any social institution it must have an structure and if it has an structure it must have certain function so if we are trying to see the function of an social institution we can also derive the structures of the uh, institution so now let's move to the structure the constitutive roles of an institution and their relation to one another can be referred to as the structure of the institution note that on this conception of institution as embodied structure of roles and associated rules the nature of any institution at a given time will to some extent reflect the personal character of different role occupant especially influential role occupants moreover institution in this sense are dynamic evolving entities as such they have a history the diachronic structure of a narrative and a partially open ended feature and we can think of partially open ended feature it means that despite the fact that it has a history despite the fact that we have reached at a particular moment but it always opens up the possibility to change the norms even descriptive practices to come out with a new structure and that's why we call it an open ended future now talk about culture so if we have a structure we have a function and if we also have a history then we can think of a particular culture so for example just think about yourself we all have spent a good amount of time in this planet so if we think of what we have done there is a one single line or let's say that there is a one paragraph that we can all write about us and what is it is the crux is the crux that we all are carrying uh, further while we are living the culture is exactly can be understood in the same manner so apart from the formal and usually explicitly stated or defined task and rules there is an important implicit and informal dimension of an institution roughly describable as institutional culture the notion comprises the informal attitudes values norms and the ethos or spirit which pervades an institution culture in this sense determines much of the activity of the members of that institution or at least the manner in which the activity is undertaken so culture is one implicit thing that drives the activities the manner of the actor in any institution now let's move to the last uh, important characteristic of the social institution which is sanction so unless until we do not come out with the principle or the guiding force that can determine which action uh, can be taken which action can be uh, cannot be taken we can never understand a well uh, well structured social institution so in addition to structure function and culture social institution necessarily involves sanction it is uncontroversial that social institution involve informal sanction such as moral disapproval following on non conformity to institutional norms however some theorists argue that formal sanctions such as punishment are a necessary feature of institution formal sanctions are certainly a feature of many institution notably legal system however they do not seem to be a feature of all institutions so definitely sanction is a significant uh, characteristic because it tells you not to do in any particular social institution so now let's move to the main theoretical accounts of social institution we have three theories atomistic theories functional theories and molecular theories or we can also think of holistic theories the so atomistic theories tells us that theoretical accounts of institution identify institution with relatively simple social forms especially, especially conventions social norms or values at one level this is merely a verbal dispute 
such simpler form could simply be termed institutions. However, at another level, the dispute is not merely verbal, since what we are calling institutions would on such a view consist simply of sets of convention, social norms or rules. These accounts are called atomistic theories of institution. Here, the atom itself typically consists of actions of individual human persons. For example, conventions as regularities in action that solve coordinating problem. The individual agents are not themselves defined in terms of institutional forms, such as institutional roles. Hence, atomistic theories of institution tend to go hand in gloves with atomistic theories of all collective entities. For example, a society consists of an aggregate of individual human person. Moreover, atomistic theories tend to identify the individual agent as a locus of moral value. So, in this particular sense, the individual person determines the objective, the moral morality of the institution. Here, a particular person becomes so significant in any uh, social institution. Let's move to holistic account. By contrast with atomistic account of social institution, holistic accounts stress the uh, interrelationship of institutional institution or we can also say structure of institution and their contribution to larger and more complete social complexes, especially societies. So according to Barry Burness, functionalist theories in the social science seek to describe to understand and in most cases to explain the orderliness and stability of entire social system. In so far as they treat individuals, the treatment comes after an emergence from analysis of the system as a whole. Functionalist theories move from an understanding of the whole to an understanding of the parts of that whole, whereas individualism proceeds in the opposite direction. So here we can think that there is always an overall function of a, a institution, social institution and accordingly we define and determine the function of a particular individual. Here we take whole as the most center and the significant aspect of a social institution which determines the action, the desires and wills of a particular individual. Molecularistic account would not seek to reduce the institution to a simpler atomic forms such as conventions nor would it seek to define an institution in terms of its relationship with other institutions and its contribution to the larger societal whole. Rather, each institution would be analogous to a molecule. It would have a constitutive elements, let's say that at atoms, but also have its own structure and unity. Here we can think of a different uh, structure within a social institution. So neither we are going to reduce the whole institution into atoms nor we are going to unite it as a whole. Rather we are going to have small groups that may include uh, uh, constitutive elements that we call atoms in atomistic theory. Here we can think of norms, we can think of structure, small structure and which constitutes a small uh, institution within social institution and that's how we are going to determine the morality, the action, the dream, the objective of a social institution. So we can find here that atomistic and holistic accounts of institution have been presented and found to be problematic. Atomistic accounts focus on the elements of institution and thereby fail to provide an adequate account of the structure or glue that might transfer a mere set of convention or rules into an institution. Holistic accounts focus on the whole society of which institutions are typically a part and seek to explain the part in terms of the whole. In so doing, they fail to offer an account of institution that sufficiently respect their distinctive character and relative ontological independence of society conceived as a unitary whole. So let us now turn to an account of institution that treats institutions, so to speak, on their own terms. The account in question is consistent with the institutional molecularism broadly conceived. So in the next video, we are going to learn much about molecularism. We are going to talk about morality. We will be talking about rights and how it is different from justice. Can we really think of justice? only in terms of rights, in terms of human rights and also certain other rights which we can think of. For next video, kindly tune in. Thank you.